Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of stars. They're looking wonderful. The only thing is we're a little bit lost in space. It's difficult to say which way is up. It's difficult to recognize any of the stars. So let's go ahead and uh, get some constellations in there. I'm going to show you guys an application. It's called Stellarium. It's pretty awesome. It's open source. And there's a whole bunch of nifty features. You can get it on any platform from PC to Windows to Mac, like Android, um, Linux, and also it runs in the web browser. Uh, now you see if you can you can click on any of the any of the planets and a lot of the stars. You get all its information about them. It goes and it fetches a Wikipedia article for them. There's a whole bunch of stuff in it. And as well as that, you have this constellation feature. So we're able to we're able to look at all these all these constellations, and what's really awesome for us is that this because this this uh, this application has been released under the GNU GPL license, we're able to use the data. I just want to talk for a moment about licensing. Um, the, the the GPL license has a specific clause to it, which kind of was what makes it special. Is it says anyone can use this application. You can build your own applications with the data from it, as long as you release it under the same license, which means that anyone else can build an application from your application. It happens to be what, what this, uh, what if you have a look at the Pirates Just Are Star Chart 3D, that, like this, uh, this, this series is also under the same license. And so that's the, that's the core of it. Because we're under the same license, we're able to download and use all the information from Stellarium's GitHub page. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. What we're really interested in is this Sky Cultures, Sky Cultures folder, which will hold a whole bunch of constellation data for many different cultures. So you can go ahead and download, download the entire, download the entire repo just by hitting clone or download. Um, I'll, sh I'll show you one that I prepared earlier. Here we go, Stellarium Master. You go ahead and open it up. Now, really, the only folder we're interested in is this Sky Cultures folder. So I'm going to just copy that outside of the original folder for now. Delete the rest of them. And another thing is, there's a lot of there's a lot of, uh, of uh, pictures in here. For example, if I open up Burong, we've got all these all these lovely images, but we're not going to be using them for this project, and they they take up a bit of space. So I'm also going to remove all of those. Uh, if, I, if I have a look, it's going to also include all this CMake information, but we don't need that either. So any .png files, we can go ahead and delete. And now let's have a look at the sort of data that we'll be working with. Let's see, what do we got? I'm going to go ahead and open Maori constellations. Okay, so if I have a look here, I'll just open this up in a text editor. We've got we've got a few a few files here, but for each culture we have a constellation names and a constellations HIP files. Okay, so let's have a look at this HIP folder, a file rather. Um, <clears throat> we've got all these numbers, and you'll notice we have these uh, like uh, chorus. You have a you have a, an index numbers in the first line, and then this second line is the amount of lines in that constellation. Sorry, the second entry rather is the amount of lines in constellation. So for example, let's take number two. Okay, this has got index number two. It's got one line in its constellation, which is from a star uh, uh, with this ID to the star with this ID. Now the IDs are from this hip here, means Hipparchos, the Hipparchos star catalog. So with all of our star data, which happens happens to include the Hipparchos catalog ID, we can say, oh, I know which star that this one's referencing to by that ID. And we can say it's a line from 68702 to 71683. Now, for example, uh, this first entry, that one's got two lines in it. So a line from this first one to the second one and from this one to this one. Okay, so it's, it's a little bit like uh, connect the dots, quite literally. So you see we have uh, 26727 to 26311, and then from 26311 to 25930. Okay, and also we have this constellation names.ing.fab um, uh, folder as well, a uh, file as well, rather. Um, <clears throat> 
this has a corresponding ID. So we have 01 corresponds to 01, you know, 05 corresponds to 05. And we, from this, we can get the names. Taki or Aotahi, etc. Uh, sometimes it depends on the, on, the, on the culture, but some of them have translations for them as well. Uh, for example, we have a translation for this one. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and have a look at how to get this into our code. I'll close that up. Okay, so in our Sky Cultures folder, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna copy it, and inside of the repository, I'm gonna put it inside our assets databases, and I'll just copy this uh, this Sky Cultures folder into the databases. Before we jump in, it'll be worthwhile to take a minute to see how this new this new data is gonna integrate with the system that we already have in place. So I'll go ahead and open up my little drawer and program. So what have we got so far? We have our, our stars.csv, which then turns into our star info array, which then turns into a mesh, turns into a prefab, turns into an instance. Okay, and, and what have we got? So, uh, what have we just introduced? Well, we've got our our constellations. Uh, it's a it's a dot fab, which I mean, it's really it's a text file that with uh, spaces separating the data rather than commas, and we've also got our constellation names. Constellation names. Dot fab. So th those two those two files we can use to to create our constellation info. So they're going to go into constellation info. Constellation info which which is essentially an array of stars. <clears throat> an array of connections. We're really thinking about connect the dots here. So you got from point A to point B, from point B to point C. So if this was A, B, C, we're going to have a star info for each of them. So for example, for each line, we'd have a, a star info would be, our, our array would be like this. It would be like A, B, B, C. And then we'll know, that it would know the, the mesh renderer will know how to, how to create that. So um, once we have that constellation info, we'll turn that into a mesh into a prefab and etc. It, it'll be the same the same the same flow of data after that as our star info. All right, um let's go ahead and let's go ahead and oh, did I? yeah, can you see that? Yeah. Okay, a b b c if that makes sense. So it goes a to b, b to c. All right, let's go ahead and get get that cracking. Okay, uh we'll go ahead and we'll open up our our code okay so once that's open the first thing we're going to create is our constellation database loader so we'll go constellation database loader this is in our database loaders folder by the way loader.cs okay um i'll close that star database loader make this one a little bit bigger. Now this is also going to inherit our database loader. So I'm just going to create a new class. Now we'll say public class constellation database loader inherit from database loader. And of course what that means is we'll need to implement our, uh, let's see, our public override void load database. Okay. So there's really two things we need to do in this in this database loader. We need to load the names of the constellations as well as the as well as create the constellations themselves, the constellation info. So let's start with the names. I'll I'll, I'll grab up one of the one of the files that we'll be working with. So if I go to a databases slash sky cultures, uh, let's go with Egyptian uh, constellation names .fab. Okay, so we've got here. Uh, it's, it's what's essentially three entries. The first entry being the ID, 
Uh, in this case, it's a number. If we went into the, for example, the uh, the modern constellations, it would be a uh, three letter three letters. <clears throat> so essentially, a string for its ID, a string for its um, native name. In this case, in the Egyptian case, there's no native name, and then a translated name. So because not all of them have a native name, but some of them have a translated name, we're going to use the, the English translated name. So what we essentially need to do is we need to go through this entire database, grab its, its, its ID, which we're going to put into a dictionary. So this is going to be the, the key, and then the name will be the value. So we're a dictionary of, of strings as keys and strings as values. So let's go ahead and see what that would look like. I'm going to be using uh, system.link. We're also going to use system.collections.generic. We're also going to use system.text.regularexpressions. These are really handy little, handy little um, sequences of characters we can use to, to, to pass uh, strings. For example, we could write a regular expression that says, give us the text that's in between these characters and these characters. So we'll see what that looks like in a moment. I'm going to create a new uh, function and this is going to return a dictionary of type string and string and this will be called get names. Okay, so first of all we need to load the database. Well, whereabouts is the database? Um, it's going to be in a folder, this folder called Egyptian now it's got the folder called Egyptian has two databases we need. It's got this uh, constellation names and also constellations HIP or Hipparchos. So what we can do is we can have a public string string folder name, and then we can uh, add to that that folder name this uh, this names.ing.fab. So uh, so in other words, we can use this folder name and then from that get our 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 constellations themselves and also their corresponding names. Okay, so we'll say we'll have a string in our in our get names function. This will be called uh, names path, and that's going to equal folder folder. I should call it a folder name. It really should be called folder path. Okay, this is going to equal folder path plus a forward slash, and then we're going to pass in that constellation names.ing.fab. Okay, which will give us this file. Now let's go ahead and load that in. So we're going to return uh, utility uh, IO utility dot open lines uh, with the folder name, uh, folder uh, names path rather, names path. All right. Okay, and now what we need to do is we need to pass through all of all of this data. So at the moment we've got an array of all of these lines. It's it's leaving out these white these lines with white space at the end because our IO utility knows how to handle that. And what we're going to do is we're going to step by step um, uh, filter filter through all this data or one of these lines of data and 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 figure out uh, how to how to extract the key and the value. So I'm just going to copy one of them over here just so that we know what we're working with. Okay, so this is an example of, of one of the lines. What we're going to say is we're going to for each line we're going to select uh, this is for each line and then we're going to have an anonymous function and um, this function is going to return a key a new key v key value pair. Uh, so essentially we can think of a dictionary as an array of key value pairs, key value pair of type string and string. And we'll leave that for now. Oh, I'll just, I'll just give it dummy values for now. I like things sort of looking correct just for a moment. And then, and then we're just going to say two dictionary. Uh, this is just the syntax for this KVP. Um, this is how we, how we, we turn an array of array of key value pairs, uh, I enumerable of key value pairs into a dictionary. KVP dot key. And then KVP. It looks a little strange, but this is just how it's done. Dot value. Okay. <clears throat> 
So now we need to we need to extract these keys and values. Well, the first one's relatively easy. So I can say string key is equal to is going to be equal to uh, this first this first three letters. Now in regular expressions we can say give us every from the beginning of the text give us every every uh, it's called a word a word character which would be either a digit or a number a digit or a letter rather so we can say key equals equals uh, regex dot uh, dot match and the input will be the line uh, yeah the line and the pattern or the matching pattern is going to be uh, we need going to need an at symbol and we'll do a uh, let's see a backslash w plus I think that's it so <clears throat> the at symbol is saying don't treat this like an escape character don't treat the backslash like an escape character because regular expression knows what a backslash w means and the plus means one or more so it's saying okay the first one or more until we get so it goes zero yep that's a word character one yep that's a word character one that's a word character yep 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 and then space oh that's not a word character so that's where it'll end we're going to convert that to a string and there's our key <clears throat> that'll work for letters or numbers now our value is a little bit more complicated because our value We've got to we've got to find this find the this text that has this syntax. Okay, we're going to do it in two steps. The first step is to we, we're going to what we're going to call a value dirty. So this is going to be the value including these characters around it. Okay, this is going to equal regex dot match. Again, we're going to pass the line in. And the syntax is going to be a little bit longer. Okay, so we're going to say we're going to. I want you to find an underscore, and then I want to find a uh, open brackets. We use these these um, these square brackets to encapsulate the open brackets to to say like I literally mean that that are open brackets. And <clears throat> and then after that we're going to need a. Um, uh, uh, Quotation mark. Now you'll notice that you know you'll notice that it's gone red here, and we have this little escape character. That's because instead, if we just if we didn't have the escape character, then C sharp would think we were finishing the string. But we really we want to say okay, no, uh, we really want that quotation mark. Okay, so now we've got uh, uh, underscore open brackets quotation mark. Now we say um, uh, what do we say? Okay, yeah, so we say dot star, which means as many letters as you want, and then we have a question mark after that, which says, which says, um, it, it's, this means lazy, which means, uh, let's say, for example, we had a text that looked like this, then that gives it the possibility of doing all that text, which, you know, in this case, it wouldn't be likely, but still, we want to be explicit. We want to say until the first occurrence of these closing closing quotations and closing brackets okay so dot star question mark and then another uh, another bracket another quotation and then a closing bracket okay we're g again we're going to convert that to a string and now wh what we're going to have is we're going to have essentially this uh, this entire string we just need to remove those those values uh, those uh, those encapsulating values so I'm going to say string value is equal to regex dot replace. All right, and the input will be value dirty, and the pattern that we'll be using will be uh, this. These these square brackets they really mean any character that's inside the square brackets. So we can have uh, re replace any underscores, replace any quotation marks, and also replace any opening or closing brackets. And again, we'll convert that to a string. Oh, do we? Oh no, it's already it's already it's already returned as a string. I think. Let's see. System dot text string regex replace input replacement. That looks good. What's it complaining about? 
An object reference is required for the non-static field. Regex dot replace. Oh, oh, it, it's saying okay. It's saying oh, okay. So I know what values you want me to look for. Then what do you want me to do with them? So I want you to replace them with a string dot dirty. Oh, it's str string dot dirty. String dot empty. <laughs> okay. There we go. So now we're going to return a new key value pair with the instead of these these empty values, we'll pass in the key and the value. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and see how we're going so far. So we'll just say var names equals get names. <clears throat> and then I'm going to say names uh, dot for each. Second, yeah, names dot for each. And this is going to be a key value pair because it's a dictionary. And we're just going to debug debug do oh we need to use unity engine unity engine okay we say debug dot log kvp dot key uh we'll just be really explicit so we'll say uh, uh name uh, id is equal to kvp dot key and then we're also going to have a backslash we'll have a tab and then we'll say uh name is equal to kvp dot value okay let's go ahead and open up unity and see how we did <clears throat> yeah so at the moment we're just we're just importing the names of the the names of each of the constellations and and, and popping them into the into the console Okay, so in procedural assets, I'm gonna have a new for a new. F yeah, I'll just create an oh, oh. I I need a I need to create a menu asset a menu. An asset menu name as well. So I'm gonna just copy this syntax for star one, pop it in here, and we're just gonna say this is a constellation database loader. Such a uh, databases. Okay, just wait for it to compile. Databases, constellation database loader. Okay. All right, so let's give it a path to one of our uh, database, one of our sky cultures. I'm going to give it the path of the the Maori constellation. So remember, this is a folder name rather than the actual path to the file itself. Okay, so now I'm going to go into procedural assets, load it in, load database. Okay, so we have the ID, and then we have each of the each of the names. Perfect. <clears throat> so now let's go ahead and and load in the constellations themselves. Um, let's see, where are we up to? Names, constellations. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? First of all, let's let's load let's load let's just get the lines for each constellation. Now this is gonna be our constellations HIP file. So I'm just gonna get an example of that. Uh, let's see in Chinese constellations HIP. Okay. So just like how we got our our names path, <clears throat> we're gonna do something very similar for our constellations path. So we just have um, uh, let's see, var constellations path is equal to folder path plus slash constellations hip dot fab. Okay, now that we'll be able to say um, io utility dot open lines constellation path constellations path, and then we can say dot select so for each line we want to create a new constellation info so let's go ahead and create our constellation info class uh, scripts info classes constellation info this will work in a very similar way to our star info class constellation info dot cs okay 
Now, just like our star info class, I think I did it with the star info classes. Job of J. Yeah, we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it serializable, which will mean that hopefully the the database loaders will be able to remember these these constellations and also be able to render uh, be able to show them in the inspector. So system dot serializable. Uh, this will be a public class constellation info. Now it'll have an array of uh, star infos, although it'll be used differently from how our star database loader uses them. So our star database loader kind of holds onto all the stars, like each, each individual one. Whereas what this one's really doing is this is having a, a connect the dots. So zero to one, one to two, two to three, or two to zero, or whatever. <clears throat> so it'll look a little different. <clears throat> Now we're going to have a public string. In fact, we'll make this public as well. A uh, public string, this will be ID, and also a public string name. Uh, okay, so for example, in, in, uh, in the Chinese example, the ID is this number. If we have a look at our, our Western constellations HIP, constellations HIP, it's a three, it's a three letter abbreviation of its full name. The, yeah, yeah, so I'm talking about the IDs here. Okay, so <clears throat> each one is going to, let's see, we can have a constructor here, uh, public constellation info. Each one will be passed in one of these lines. So this is what we're working with. I'm going to call it, remember with our, our star info, it was called CSV text. I'm going to call this one white space text so we know how it's separated. String white space text. Okay, <clears throat> now remember that remember that what we're doing is we're pretty much just getting these these HI Hipparchos IDs and we're we're um, we're we're finding them all. So as hmm, how do I explain? It? Okay, so what we need to do is we need to load in this string, figure out which one. Yeah, I'll, I'll just so it's not so much data. I'm just gonna copy one over here. Okay. So then we're just working with that. All right, so we've got one of these lines, right? What we want to do is we want to get all of the, see, all of these over, these ones after the three, that's all your HIP IDs. So we need to turn those into an array, and then from, for each of those IDs, we need to go and fetch the, the corresponding star from our star database loader. So our star database loader needs to know how to, um, needs to know how to find find the, a corresponding Hipparchos ID for um, for for its stars. Okay, wait, I'll, I'll, I'm so much better. I'll just write the code. It makes more sense. So public star info get star by hip ID. There, that wasn't so difficult. Okay, so you pass in a string. Uh, pass in a string or a number. It should be an integer, really. Uh, int hip uh, hip ID. Okay, <clears throat> this would be hip ID. And so, for what we're going to say is, oh, okay. <clears throat> One more thing we need to do is when we we well, our stars. I, I remember our stars don't know what 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 a hip ID is at this point. So we're just going to do one little addition to our star info class, and that is add. We have our hyg ID, but let's have a hip ID as well. And I'm just going to need to. I believe it's lines one. Uh, H. Yeah, I believe that's the that's the that's the index. I'm just going to double check that. So in our hyg reference, uh, it's getting messy, but it's okay. In a HIG reference, uh, yep, so index one is the hip ID. I know I'm throwing a lot of a lot of tabs open at you guys, but but you, you can get it. Okay, so our HIP ID is going to equal to lines one and it's going to be an integer. Okay, so now next time we load our star infos, they'll all have a HIP, a hip arcos ID. I'll just yeah, okay. Now we'll say uh, var star info equals stars dot first or default. So it's going to say, give me the first star where its hip ID 
is equal to hip ID. Now it's possible that it's possible that it won't be able to find it. Hopefully that'll never happen. Hopefully for every star in every constellation, we'll have one in our star database. It, just in case it doesn't, we want to know about it. So if star info is uh, equal to null, because uh, this first order fault means I'll give you the first star, and if you do, if there aren't any there, I'll just pass in pass you null. And so we're going to log that debug dot log warning uh, warning no star with ID zero let's see ID ID plus hip ID plus found okay so now we'll know about it Otherwise, well, otherwise, well, anyway, we're going to return star info. So it's possible that this star is going to this star is going to be null, and then we'll probably get errors down the road. But it it shouldn't happen. And this is stuff that we're doing in the editor before we you know before we send things out. Uh, you know, <clears throat> it's it, this isn't play mode stuff. Okay, so uh, let's see uh, constellation info. So our star database loader knows how to get a star by its hip ID. And now we need to figure out what those we need to extract those IDs from this from this uh, from this from this string. So we're gonna do another another little another little regex. This one's uh, much simpler. <clears throat> so we're gonna go ahead and uh, use system dot Text dot regular expressions. We're also going to use system dot link. Oh, dot link. <clears throat> so we're going to say um, var lines equals regex dot split. And how are we going to split it? We're going to split it by any amount of white space. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna just show you a few things as well. Okay, so we'll just say white space text dot. Um, let's say for example, uh, let's say for example, we can take our time to do this. It's worth knowing about. Let's say for example, we had a string like this, and we say, hey regex, I want to split you by every single white space. Well, it's gonna say, okay, well here's a white space. Uh, sorry, here's a white space. So this initial character it'll be an empty string but it will be a, a legit value so that'll be our value zero then it'll be one two three four five six seven eight and then it'll have okay there's a space and then split this at the end as well so what we're going to need to do is well there's a handy method called trim which will mean it'll turn uh, that that string into this string and then we can, from there, we can say, okay, if you ever find a white space and any amount of white space, it could look like this. Could look like anything like this, new lines, tabs, anything like that. Then we're gonna say, I want you to split it by that. So how we say that is uh, backslash S plus one or more white spaces. And we're going to convert that to an array, and that's going to give us uh, give us our lines. Okay, so now um, ID is going to equal the first line. ID equals uh, lines zero, and our I'm just going to it's getting a bit difficult to read. Okay, and then um, everyone every 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 string that's after our, uh, so this would be zero and then one, and this would be our second. So we want to skip two, skip the first two elements. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna say, um, uh, let's see, it would be a, an, an integer array, integer array, uh, inter, integer array, um, uh, hip IDs, if that's going to equal our uh, lines dot skip skip the first two elements 
skip the first two elements and then once we've skipped those we need to select we need to convert them into integers uh, so we'll say id uh, int dot pass id and then we're going to convert it into an array because I will like arrays they're just so clean and simple okay and now now we have our hip IDs we can easily convert those into stars in fact we should really just say this we should just say stars equals let's do a big old big old link queries the longer the better lines dot skip dot select its ID and then once we have once we have an array of integers we can just say dot select dot select so this is going to be the ID uh, int make it a bit more explicit ID string ID integer okay we're going to select um, star database oh but we don't know what star database we're working with so when we create our constellation info we're going to need a reference to the star database so star database loader star database and we're going to say star database dot get star by hip id id hip nope id hip dot two array which should work oh what am i saying id hip id int rather okay so now we have our stars and for that that'll do oh there's one more thing i wanted to do to this while well, we got we got time uh the one more thing i want to do to this is i want to have a i want to be able to easily print out what's going on with it so it's going to publicly override uh, void to oh no it's going to return a string to string okay we're going to return uh, this is just a nice way of doing this string dot format and then we can say uh, zero we say like uh, for example ID is going to be zero uh, we're going to say tab um, name is going to be uh, one and then tab uh, number of stars is gonna be two. So what is this saying? This is saying um, um, uh, these are three arguments that we can pass into this pass into this this function. So string format uh, all that string, and then we're just gonna say pass in the name, then pass in the uh, oh sorry the ID then pass in the name and then pass in the number of stars which is stars dot count or stars dot length rather length length uh, divided by two I really what I wanted to say here is number of lines we want to know if it's a for example if it was a square constellation it would have four lines okay so now we're able to nicely nicely print it as a string so this this class is done for the moment. Now we can say open lines. Uh, so let's see. Duh, duh, duh. What we're saying is um, constellation. So so we're going to have an array of constellation infos. Public constellation constellation info array constellations. Okay, uh, and then we're saying that when we do this, we say constellations is going to equal what we're doing here. So constellations equals IOutility dot open lines dot select. Uh, that's going to be a line. We're going to select a new constellation constellation info to which we'll pass in that line and we'll also pass in a reference to that star database loader. So we're going to need our constellation database is going to like in that diagram I showed. It's going to need to know which uh, which database loader you want to which star database loader you want to get that information from. So I have a public star database loader star database, and we'll pass in star database. Oh, and of course dot to array. Lovely. Okay, now let's. Um, Oh, let's just give that a go because it might just it might just it might just show in the inspector. Okay. So our star database, we're gonna to need to give it a reference to our star database. 
At the moment, we've got a constellation size of zero. We'll press load database. Okay, could not find file. Constellations hib. <laughs> okay, whoops. <laughs> Little typo there. Constellations hip. That's a bit better. Okay, so now we have. Oh, yep. Yeah. No, that's right. We have three. We have four or five stars. They have an ID. They have uh, all these stars that they found. Um, but we've had, had a lot that couldn't be found. Okay. What I forgot to do was to, um, because I just created that field for the star info classes, we need to regenerate all our star infos. So I'm going to go ahead and press uh, generate and instantiate again. That'll call our database loader to reload those, those stars. And now if I go back to my constellation database loader and I hit load database again, oh, look at that. The fact that nothing happened is perfect. <laughs> that means that, that it found all the stars it was looking for, which is remarkable. We're talking about two databases of like thousands of pieces of data and it was able to find a, find a star for each of the constellations. So for example, let's just have a look at the first, the first one. Okay, so we have a element, element zero is um, some constellation. We don't have the name yet. We'll do that next. And the stars, it's found four stars with all of their... Oh, they've all got proper names. That's awesome. You know why it's not surprising that constellations have proper names? It's because constellations are generally made out of the brightest stars. So <clears throat> the brightest stars tend to have names. All right, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and assign those names for the constellations. All right, so we'll have one more function in this in this class, and we'll call it. It's going to be a, it's going to be a, a void function because it's going to assign the names to each of the constellations. So assign names, uh, assign constellation names, and we're just going to pass in these names that are up here. Uh, so we'll say. Uh, uh, what is that? That's a, an a array of strings. Oh no, it's a dictionary rather. Dictionary of string, string names. So what we really need to do is we need to say um, <clears throat> if if for each for each constellation if it's if its ID is the same as if if this dictionary contains a, an ID that's the same as that constellation ID, then let's assign the name to it. Otherwise, let's assign the name unknown. Okay, so uh, let's see. What do we do? This we say string name, and we say uh, names dot try get value. Okay, so the key will be. Uh, Okay, so we say, yeah, for each constellation. So constellations dot for each, for each, see. See, it's like that. Remember, we made that extension method. You really start to feel grateful for it the more you use it. Names dot try get value, uh, C, okay, uh, yeah, C dot ID it will be the key. Now, out will be the name. Uh, string okay so so this this string name here that's what we're attempting to that's like a very a value that we're attempting to fill but it won't cra it won't cause an error if it doesn't that's why it's done with it in this way okay it's gonna make this look a little neater okay so now names to try get value oh yeah so this will be a uh, Anonymous anonymous method. Okay, so names got try get value out name. I'm just rearranging this in my mind. Okay, so okay, try and get the value. Bring out bring out the name. Okay, now we say name equals uh, name uh, is equal to string dot uh, or is equal to null, which will which will be set to null if it's uh, if it couldn't find the name. If it's equal to null, we'll just say uh, unknown. Otherwise, it'll equal uh, name. Oh, and we're not, we're not saying um, name. We're saying constellation. So that's C. This is for each constellation. We're saying the constellation's 
name. C dot name equals name is equal to null. If it's equal to null, then unknown. Otherwise, let's set it to uh, set it to this new name. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and run this. Uh, let's see. I go names equals get names. We say assign. We say it has to happen after we've created our constellations. Assign constellation names, and we'll pass in names. See how we go. Okay, load database. Hmm. All right. So now each of them have a name. The great boat of Tamarretti. Awesome. Awesome stuff. And that's yeah, that's everything for this episode.